I'm Catherine. I'm a librarian at the Port Orange Regional Library and I'm here today in beautiful New Smyrna Beach, Florida at Marlin's Bees. Marlin's Bees is owned by Donna and Marlin Athern. <laughs> Donna and Marlin Athern. Um, and I'm going to be talking to them in just a moment. I had a great time putting on my bee suit just to make sure that I don't have any surprise visitors. So let's find out more about Marlin and their bees. This is one of the many hives owned by the Marlin's bees. Let's watch the action. See, they touch everything together. They clean each other. There's a couple that just went in with pollen on their legs. <laughs> this is Marlin and Donna of Marlin's Bees. Um, can you tell me how many bees are in this hive that you're standing next to? Well, this one's pretty big. This early in the year has probably got about 40,000 bees, but by the end of the summer it'll be close to 100. Wow. Do you, you're comfortable not wearing the bee suit being this close to the bees? Uh, I am familiar with this, this hive and I know their temperament. And uh, as cool as it is today, and we're really not in the middle of their flight pattern in front of the front door like you are. <laughs> and uh, so, no, I'm not really worried about this right now. All right, I, s I noticed there's a smaller hive next to you over on the other side. All right, that hive, that hive size, is, size is called a nuke. It's a nucleus hive. It's got five frames. So when new beekeepers start here in Florida, they'll, they'll generally buy a nuke full of bees from a, uh, a bee breeder like SNS apiaries or Jester's bees, things like that, over D and J over in Umatilla. And then they'll start a beehive. And then they'll take those five frames and move them into a box the size of just this yellow one, mm -hmm. which is a standard 10 frame box, and then they'll grow out from there. How much honey can you get from this many honeybees? Well, uh, the state of Florida apiary inspectors average right now in the state of Florida is about 64 pounds per year. Uh, that varies on, of course, the health of the hive and the honey flow in the area and what's available. Uh, I've had hives um, get no honey all year long, and I've had hives where I've collected hundreds of pounds in a year. So there's a lot of variables, but generally in the neighborhood of about a five-gallon bucket per season. Wow. And what do you do with all that honey? Well, if you've got one or two hives, you can consume it, bake with it, use it, you know, instead of white sugar and, you know, make your neighbors happy and give them honey and so forth. I generally run about 20 hives, so I make about a 55-gallon drum or better a year. So I sell my excess at, you know, local farmers markets and events and things like that. And Donna, what's your favorite part about beekeeping? I enjoy watching them. If you could come close enough to watch how this little girl here is cleaning herself and removing all of the pollen that she's collected. She's also throwing her scent glands up so that you can see her fan it. see her. Bees fart. <laughs> that has, has a, a gas that allows them to, to point scents out that there's stuff out here to get and to collect. And so they'll scent the, the location, they'll scent where the queen is. They'll do all sorts of things to do that. But notice all the hair she has on her. That All that hair helps her to collect pollens from the air as she travels through. That's one of the characteristics that make a bee a bee is hair. Whether it's this species, Apis mellifera, or some of the native species we have here in Florida that most of them li live underground. But hair is the common denominator for most bees. See how she's cleaning her legs and her buttocks and, yeah. and cleaning it all off, all, getting all the hair covered off of her butt, cleaned off. Yeah. And then the other ones coming in and out of that door area, you'll notice they're full of hair. That indicates how young they are also. Because yeah. as you get older, you lose your hair. <laughs> yeah. That one on the doorstep's a little bit older. Most of these are uh, Italian stock bees, so they tend to be very light in color, very mild-mannered. There are other stocks that are almost black, um, like the German black bee and the, and, the, and the 
the Russians and the Corolians are all tend to be light, very dark, but Italian bees tend to be very light in color. Now, how do you tell the difference between a honey bee and a regular bee, or a bee that do all bees do honey? No. Only a honey bee will, will give honey. It's honey, so honey bees, the 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 species Apis mellifera, is the only species. Um, in Europe, we have one other species in the Americas that actually predates a honeybee because most people don't realize honeybees that you were just looking at, Apis mellifera, is not native to this hemisphere. It was brought here by our colonists back in the 15, 16, 1700s. Um, the only honey producing bee um, that we know of in this hemisphere is in South America, and it's a stingless bee. That makes a very different hive from this and makes much, much, much smaller amounts. Only about a one pound jar an entire year. Uh, but they're a stingless bee. Uh, generally find them in Costa Rica in that area. Do all bees, even if they don't produce honey, do they still spread the, the pollen around to Sure, sure. Pollinate. One of the primary pollinators, again, that's why honeybees, one of their character, physical characteristics is hair, is as they fly through the air, they create, a, they create a, a positive electric field around themselves, much like uh, rubbing a balloon on a nylon chair, okay? And the sticky pollen that they collect has a negative field on it. And so when they land, literally the pollen leaps off the flower and sticks to them. And as they move from flower to flower, they comb it down. In this case, the Apis mellifera puts it in their little pollen baskets or tangles of hair on their, uh, on their hind legs. There are other species like uh, leaf, leaf cutter bees, uh, mason bees, which are all tube dwellers. Uh, like the leaf cutter, actually, this, its scopa or area where they put their pollen is actually on their belly. So different bees that do it different ways, but one of their primary sources for all their young, their protein is pollen. So you have to have pollen to make bees. Whether it's Apis mellifera or whether it's any of the other native species, pollen is the primary uh, protein source for them. Now, if I wanted to attract bees to my garden, what are good plants? Okay, you can't go wrong with any of the native species that we have in Florida. So like we say in, in the beekeeping, where you go native, uh, that's your best quality because not all of uh, plants or not all flowers have pollen and not all flowers have nectar. Um, some look really cool, but as far as the bee community, they might as well be a stop sign in the road. They got no use for it. They don't want to run right through it. Um, so if you go natives, you go for, especially for bees, you want to go flowers that have a really short throat because their tongue's not that long. Um, the only exception would be if you have long flowers is if you have bumblebees in the area. Again, we have about six varieties of bumblebees in Florida. And again, they're all subterranean dwellers. They live underground. Uh, but bumblebees actually, pound for pound, are a better pollinator than honeybees, except they don't produce honey. And... Um, they don't really work in large groups, more than a couple of hundred. Uh, this is a, as far as agriculture, this is a moving workforce right here for, you know, for watermelons and squash and all the fruits and vegetables. You want a movable workforce. But pound for pound, the bumblebee is a better pollinator because it's so big and so brutal, it'll actually tear flowers open to get to the nectar. Wow. Well, thank you very much for showing me your hive. Um, I'd like to see some of your products, too. And show me some honey. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, I'm here inside the honey house. Donna's going to tell us all about her honey. Okay, our honey is from the local area. What we do is at each different time of year, we pull honey 
from that particular floral source. That's how we know what type of honey the bees have collected or what nectars the bees have collected and combined it with whatever else is out there. So if we pull in the first pull of the year, we know the blackberry has been blooming off the front fence and that season is over and then we pull the honey in April. So it's going to have some of that blackberry bloom in it. So that one sold out. There's only so much that the bees are going to produce for our hives. And so without any more of that, we move to the next um, honey, and that's the orange blossom, which is also blooming right now in, in March and February. And you'll notice it's a darker honey. Um, this one we call it an orange blossom blend because it could have some of the other floral sources from the same time of year. Next we go to the palm honey. Palm honey you notice is very very light. See how fast that bubble moves? That's a higher water content in this and we call this the palm summer blend because it's at the beginning of the summer and it is during the same time we have a lot of other floral sources like the wildflowers along the side of the highways um, um, some button bushes going on, some cabbage palm. So there's a lot of different sources around these hives. So we call it a blend. Then um, I'm going to skip this one and move over to our super blend, which is a combination of what we call all of the above. It's all of the capping wax through the whole year collected into one bucket. That gives you the pollen sources from the entire year. So if you are typically allergic to oak pollen, as we explained, the bees fly through the air and they, they collect that as an as incidental because it lands on your car the same way it lands on them. So it's added to the honey. It's not collected by the bees, but it's just added to it. So that's when we'll get that blend uh, added in. And so Super Blend combines everything together. On the end here, this one is our fall Brazilian pepper. Now I know Brazilian pepper is a very invasive species plant. We want to get rid of as many as we can, but look at the richness of this honey. Look how dark and how thick. This is one of the best ones for cooking. It has an enormous flavor of an ever so slight sweet pepper on the finish. It's a good one for glazing hams, cooking with eggs, adding it to, um, to uh, cereals or oatmeal. It's an outstanding out, um, flavor. And then I'll come back to this one. This one is one typical to Florida, but it's only in the northern part of the state. And the only reason we have it is we have several customers asking for it. This is Tupelo, and it's taken that long for the bubble to move. Tupelo honey does not crystallize. This one is one that the, the people who have um, the low glycemic levels, this one is the one they'll use. But look at how clear and golden it is. Very low water content very extremely lovely flavor um, this one's one of our favorites so that gives you a little idea of the different type of floral sources and the different type of honeys they provide so donna tell me what you do here at marlin's bees what we try and do is process our honey with as little interference as possible um, i'm a licensed food handler so we bottle everything in glass jars we do not bottle in plastic we do not filter our honey and we don't heat it. We try and keep it as natural a form as we can that provides um, a safe product for customers. The only filtering we do is when we filter out the large particles of wax or bee body parts from the spin. Because some things do get captured into the hive when we cut the comb off of, of the frames. We process a lot of the wax that way and we also render wax so that we get a nice pure uh, colored uh, wax from the capping wax uh, that the bees provide as well. We also make medicines, um, ointments that help your skin for allergies or for um, um, ir irritations, redness. Uh, bees have always been used in medicine and one of those methods is with the wax. Um, the typical band-aid was honey and then a, a coating of wax. So what I've done is taken that same formula using the wax, olive oil, and vitamin E and made a, a salve that you can put on your skin. The thicker salve that I make is with mineral oil and beeswax, and that's a furniture refinisher. Beeswax was also used in waterproofing. So this product, the, the furniture moisturizer, helps waterproof your leather prevents it from turning green during the summer months when you have a lot of moisture in the air uh, because the bees wax contains antimicrobials which help 
to resist all that bacteria. So what we also do is educational programs. We do what's called Day in the Bee Yard here, where our club members or um, school kids can come over and get an actual lesson in what's beekeeping about, um, what's honey about, uh, how is the bees using the product within their own hive, and how do we use it. So we try and give um, the schools a little education as well. One of the methods that we try and teach people is when you go to a farmer's market and you see somebody selling honey, they don't necessarily have to be a beekeeper. They could be a third person selling the honey. But know who your product is being processed by. And beware when it says organic, these girls can fly as far as five miles for a nectar source or a pollen source. So you have to be able to say that there is no chemicals being used within that five mile radius in order for it to be certified organic. So beware, organic is a gray area. And if you don't know your beekeeper, why buy their product? I'd like to say a big thank you to Donna and Marlon Athern for letting me come here and learn all about the beehives that we have here in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, part of Volusia County, Florida. Thank you. Donna gave us so much great information on bees that I invited her to do a presentation here at the library. Please stay tuned for part two of our video all about bees.